Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I am Sandy Axman, the Learning Services Supervisor with Grand Yellowhead Public School Division, and I'd like to introduce members of my team. I have Sandra Davenport here, who is our half-time Cree language teacher, and Renee Fair, who is our Grand Cache uh, Indigenous uh, relations facilitator and without these two ladies we also have one more lady who unfortunately could not be here this afternoon as her dad uh, is very ill right now um, but without this team of people and without the support of system leaders like Albert Education and and those people know who they are and and who without our uh, former assistant uh, superintendent who is in the room and our present uh, admin team as well we cannot do the work that we do so first of all I'd like to thank everybody for that um, as you've heard uh, this afternoon our presentations have been about building relationships and that to me if I had to give you one golden nugget to take out of the room it is that key piece right there it's how do you go about building relationships with people at all levels so that when you need something, because we don't have all the answers, but when I need something, I can turn to Alberta Education or I can turn to my supervisors or I can turn to my team and say, we need this, how do we get it? And somebody will come up with a way to find it for us and we work together and we include our community. And so it, with all those pieces, we constantly build and scaffold and interweave every part of what we do. With learning services, I have curriculum, health and wellness, indigenous relations, and dual credit. And all of those pieces interweave to make a stronger fabric for our students. We give opportunities to our students with dual credit by ha uh, partnering with uh, Grand Prairie Regional um, uh, College in order to be able to offer dual credit opportunities for Cree language for native studies so that the things that we can't provide ourselves we now have a partnership to be able to offer those things for students who who wish to to access them we give a light at the end of the tunnel so that students can see that there is a way to transition not just from K to 12 but out into the world of work, into post-secondary, to trade, or whatever their heart desires. Um, we have success for all students as our key piece. All students will be successful. And how do we do that one student at a time? Building relationships. So I would like to um, just advance here. These are some of our main programs. It's not all of our programs, but I would like Sandra to talk about her Cree language, and then I'd like Renee to talk about how she supports students in her area. I'm Sandra Davenport. I'm originally from Isle of Cross, Saskatchewan, um, but I've been living in Edson now for the past 15 years. And for all those years, I've had the opportunity to teach Cree language. Um, I teach Cree language through a video conference predominantly um, from Wildwood um, into Grand Cache and um, the majority of the students that I teach Cree to are in Grand Cache. So Renee is also my, my partner in crime. I wouldn't be able to do the job that I, that I do. Um, without her help. So thank you very much, Renee. Um, I'm sure that you've heard um, in, in the um, sessions that you've gone that how important language, language is. Um, doing other cultural components is, is very important as well, but the language is the culture, in, in, in my professional opinion. Um, you can't separate either one. Um, the culture is what grounds you. It, it helps you um, figure out who you are, um, where you come from, and, 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 and what you have to offer. Um, the students that I teach to are not just First Nations 
Métis or Inuit students, but a lot of them are non-Indigenous students. And uh, we were just actually talking about that at the table earlier. Um, Sandy asked me um, what what the percentage was, and, and, and uh, I told her that the majority of the students that I teach are probably more non-Indigenous than they are Indigenous, and in that they're the ones who are picking up the language a lot quicker um, for whatever reason. That's, that's, that's not important. What's important is that we have a variety of students who want to come and learn about each other um, so that um, we're able to, to, to empathize with one another and, and learn from each other and walk this journey together because as we all know, we're all, we're all on this trek together. So thank you very much. My name is Renee and I live in Grand Cache and I've been there so long that I'm not telling you how long because I feel like I've been there forever. Um, I was on as lucky as Sandra to grow up with all of my cultural teachings. I am Métis, but my mom didn't have that connection. So one of the things my students can bring to me is that cultural connection, and that's really exciting because it gives them something to share with me. And I think that's the really great start about relationship building. Um, being in a small town, population 4,500, we have about 325 Indigenous um, families, people living around the area, and transportation is huge huge, huge um, obstacle for us because there's just there's just not a way to get places. So opportunity is a big thing we need to build. And if it's not there, you need to make it. So one of the things we do in Grand Cash is if we can't find it, we invent it. I run a baseball team. I've started a community race. I had um, a high school student who in really crappy shoes could get to quick to school really quick if he missed the bus. I put him in a race and boy, can that boy run. You know, it's finding all those things that makes connections. And, he, you know, his family sat and watched him run and she said, I saw this at school when he was late. I didn't think it would get him anywhere. And that's what we need to do. We need to build opportunities. We need to take that time and listen. And I think that's one of the hardest parts that teachers have is they don't always have the time. And I'm very lucky to be um, our Indigenous liaison so I can listen. I can hear those stories and find out what those kids need because often it is those opportunities you know it is as simple as we said in the session before and we talked about some of the wonderful um, EAs that were up north and doing health kits and picking people up and cover your ears Sandy sometimes making home visits when you're not supposed to like the high school kid who skipped class and I drove out to Sousa Creek and knocked on the door and said hey I missed you I thought he was gonna die but you know what he was like you missed me well, we saw you. We needed you. You're part of our school community. You matter. And without you, it's just not the same. And those are the things we need to continue doing. Thank you. Um, if you take a look at some of our other connections, I sit on the Edson Friendship Center board as a member. And in return, um, the director sits on our elder council. So it's a reciprocal relationship. It's not us saying we need you, we need you, we need you with our hand out all the time, but it is us helping each other in order to grow and to develop. Um, with uh, um, the lady who could not be here, she started a legends room in the high school in Edson, and it has made such a huge difference to that school. That school has suffered a lot of traumatic incidents over the last couple of years. They've lost six uh, student members and staff um, in different ways, uh, tragically. And that whole community has come together to grieve and to support each other. And the Legends Room is getting students back in the door. Students that we didn't see for quite some time in Parkland School. And so we are able to now have them come back in. But they reached out in unique ways. Some of them made um, homemade jam and gave to the bus driver to give to the family to say, we miss you, will you come back to school? And the support that that room and that person has given the students that are in there, they're attending more regularly, they're passing their courses, which is huge. And they want to be there now. And that will take time and it will grow and develop as we try things and, and not everything we do works out well, but along the way we grow and learn together and again about building the relationships. Um, we have an elder program and we're 
we're constantly looking to connect with different elders in the community because the one thing about an elder program is that not everybody feels well on the day you need them and we have to respect that but we are building the connections so that we can have our elders in our schools for our graduation ceremonies, for our eagle feather ceremony, for the things that we deem important and the kids deem important. We collect student voice um, through health and wellness initiatives and through um, partnering. And that way we can find out what is it that the students need next. So they guide where we go. Um, we have, we're fortunate enough to have the Palisades program uh, where students can go out to Jasper Palisades and experience uh, land-based education and that's important. We have to make it more engaging for our students. Um, we partner with ERLC and thank you so much for that because you help us host um, 50 teachers every year to come out to the Palisades and the picture at the bottom of the slide there shows um, our group photo from our last teacher camp and we're able to learn from each other and make connections so that we have a resource group that we can ask for help when we need it. Um, we, our latest, our latest um, partnership is with Mother Earth Charter School. Um, our Wildwood School has partnered with their grade 3-4 grade class in order to have students make connections in other areas. So although we, we don't have any on-reserve sites within our jurisdiction, we have neighboring partners who are more than willing to reach out and connect with us. So I think on the final note, um, the, the best, like I said, advice that I can give you is to reach out and form those partnerships. They don't happen overnight. I've been in the position for five years now, and it has taken that long just to get what I think is a foot in the door so that I can have a list of contact people. I've reached out to Edmonton Public, and, and I've reached out to all <laughs> sorts of different jurisdictions in order to help us grow and develop and everything that are uh, the schools who presented this afternoon I've taken nuggets back and the next thing I want to know is how do we get a smudge room <laughs> in our schools <laughs> so everybody helps move each other along and I think if we make those connections and reach out to each other and, and share what we're doing I think we will all be supported so thank you Well, I think you're getting a sampling of why these three programs were chosen by Alberta Education to be honored. And uh, we've seen examples for the younger students, high school, and a whole division-wide approach. One of the other schools recognized was from Grand Prairie, and it was an elementary school. And so I want to show you where you can find some of these resources and tools that you can use to discuss back with your own staffs and schools. Hopefully you're well aware of the Empowering the Spirit website that we have at ERLC. It's designed to house materials that are carefully aligned to support Alberta schools and support Alberta education priorities. We have things from how to host a family night to information on the literacy seed kit to some newer things on the grandfather teachings. I, every time I turn around, something new is being added to the site. So I hope you're well familiar with the site. If you go, its address is simply empoweringthespirit.ca. And along the tabs there, you will find a professional learning resources tab. And from there, you can scroll down and find eliminating the achievement gap. And what you'll find when you get to that page is double-sided learning guides, as we call them, describing these exact contexts that you've just heard from today. And so you'll find the learning guides that have a highlight of what those people have been up to, to to make a difference for those learners. And there's some discussion questions on the back. And we think those are particularly powerful to go back and sit with staff and, and, and share back at learning days and, and staff meetings and district meetings. So we're hoping those learning guides are a useful tool for you to take those lessons back and say, okay, what can we learn from Grand Yellowhead? What can we learn from East Glen? What can we learn from Lake Dell? So we hope those are helpful to you. And of course, they're PDFs, so you can download them. The other piece I want to share with you is a, a Google Slides presentation that we created 
It can take as little as long as you want, about an hour, or you can fill a half day with long discussions. But there's an actual full set of slides with background context, data, stats, what percentage of our learners are First Nations, Métis Inuit, and Alberta. What is the actual achievement gap? We went and found the accountability pillar results so you could truly see the data and what the gap is. So there's, I can't remember how many slides, like 50 slides. It's quite an extensive presentation. And so I invite you to find that presentation on our Empowering the Spirit page. And if you carefully open it, you will find all the presenter notes in the, the below the screen part, right? So you will have access to our thinking and why we put that presentation together. You can make a copy and edit it and use it any way you wish. So it's just a tool for your toolbox. So we hope it's helpful. Is there anything else I'm missing? I think that's the gist. And I've linked directly to that page. Another tool that we've been working with, and some of you may have seen our padlets, we're using these more as sort of on the fly as we find resources, websites, materials, how to host a blanket exercise, all sorts of things we're finding out in the big broad world as everyone's on this journey together. We've been posting on our Padlet. Those are more informal resources, not ones that we've crafted professionally, but there's so many valuable resources. So I've left that link there for you and it's constantly in evolution from foundational knowledge to Métis, to um, the new one they're working on is some reconciliation pieces, residential schools. There, I think you're, you're probably discovering there's a wealth of resources to the point now where it's hard to know where to go and, and what to sift through. So I want to close and just thank everyone for putting the time in and staying with us this afternoon. And I think the, the message has been loud and clear from all three of our, our groups. Otherwise, I thank you for your time and I wish everyone a, a safe trip or journey or whatever you're up to.